328. Can I, oh, swearing. Okay, bad. Okay, fine. Oof. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Uh, 328. Hey, everybody, it's Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, episode 328 of the Ask Gary V Show. And when I think about this person, I call her JJ in my mind, even though this is literally, actually, we stumbled into each other the other day at a tennis match. But And then I texted you and you didn't text me back. Is that true? Yeah, prick. Fuck. <laughs> not, that was not for any <laughs> real, real reason. I would love to text you back. I don't know how I missed it, but I'm gonna check that while we're doing this episode. <laughs> JJ is like, why don't you tell uh, the Vayner Nation who you are and what you're about, and then uh, we're gonna jam a little bit. Uh, my name is Jamila Jamil. Uh, you may know me from my TV show, The Good Place, uh, where I play uh, the exact opposite of who I am in real life, and I'm an activist in my day-to-day existence, and a writer. And a writer. Mm-hmm. You love I writing? A, I love writing. I used to be a journalist and I used to be a TV host and then I stumbled into acting purely by mistake. Truly was by that, mistake. Was that ever subconsciously going on no, th- never. along the way? No, no. I had no desire to do it because I felt like that was something that you really trained to do and I, I really don't you like training. You respected the craft. And you I respect wanna, the craft. And, and you didn't want to put in the work. I dislike effort. Uh, and so but you have I, natural ability in it. I, I guess transpired. so. I guess they were that looking happens. for an overly tall, annoying English woman from Pakistan, and I kind of <laughs> fit the bill. So I accept that insult. Uh, when but. that, when that, when that opportunity came, was there any debate to do it? What, yeah. Did it feel natural to do it? Like, wh- where were you in your mindset in life that made you go there? I had no money. <laughs> <laughs> I had no That's money. That's a really good answer. <laughs> I'd uh, run out of money uh, in pursuit of trying to raise money for people with disabilities to have more access at uh, big music venues and I spent all of my money trying to make that happen and it didn't happen because people are so ableist in my country and every country but in particular the UK has got listed buildings and they use that as a defense mechanism to not update their buildings in order to be accessible for people with disabilities and so I lost all of my money doing that and uh Came to America with no money and no exact plan. I wanted to be a writer. I had a pilot that I'd written. I got signed to Three Arts and they heard about, and UTA, and they heard about this this audition. They sent me for it. I was a big fan of Mike Schur. And I, you know, I'd never thought in a million years I would actually get it, but when it came to the point where I had to sign the seven-year deal before the final audition, they make you sign a seven-year deal before that final audition. So all the power is with, in their hands. Of course. And I yeah, needed the money, and I was like, if I fail, I will fail rich. Yeah. So, you know. Good for you. When was I'm that? Into that. <laughs> I, uh, that was three years ago. Understood. And now we've done four seasons, and it's a hit show, and I didn't die on my ass. Yep. And I was able to do what I wanted to do all along, which was I've been an activist since I was 19, and I've only ever entered show business as a way to leverage my the awareness. A- awareness around of things. Course. I remember when I was 19, I was watching, that was around the time that Angelina Jolie was starting to raise awareness about things that were happening in Cambodia and Pakistan. And there are Cambodian and Pakistani people ra- trying to raise awareness, and no one listens to them. We only listen to the privileged. And I was like, oh. That's nice. That's it's not nice. That's it's a sad, hack. but like that's an that's effective the way that's to the way. raise awareness. Is when you have a lot of privilege, then people listen to you. It's easier to raise awareness from the inside. And so I got into this industry in order to be able to make the noise that I'm now able to make. You know, it's super interesting. Uh, the way, and especially the reference point you made with Angelina and, and prior to her, the thought of privilege. It's super interesting because we're now living through a very interesting time of the maturity of the internet itself, which is social platforms, social networks that have at such scale in our society that in the past, privilege and wealth and things of that nature led to awareness, right? Led to scale of people paying attention to you. Mm-hmm. There, it, we're really living in this interesting time where the definition of that of privilege can almost get tweaked a little bit because having sheer audience at scale, even before you've become or have started the process of the monetization of that, Mm -hmm. can still create some of those effects. And so the attention becomes a trigger to that that leverage and privilege, because that's what it used to be, but there were so many gatekeepers in who became those winning players, Mm -hmm. whereas now, you know, whether it's TikTok or LinkedIn or YouTube, the that's door's it. wide open. It's just wide open. Mm-hmm. And the paradigm shifts are gonna be enormous and we're starting to see significant nuances of that. Mm-hmm. Take me back a little further. I, a, I just think it's interesting at 19, so I'm like now very curious about like what happened or was it building? You know, uh, Why at 19 did that happen? Was it a cause that got you going? Had it been subconsciously happening? But even before we go there, 
because I just love. You the, want to know about my birth? I do. <laughs> I'm very. Intri- I, I really genuinely like it. You know, I was born in the Soviet Union. Mm-hmm. So much of what everything I mm-hmm. feel has so much to do with the origin mm-hmm. stuff. So I yeah I do like it. So what kind of uh, where were you born? What kind of kid were you? Like what was your scene? I was born in London. I was deaf as a child. Uh, flat out. Flat out deaf. Uh, and then I would sometimes have enough operations to get my hearing back and then my hearing would go again. I'd have another operation. I had seven major operations on my hi- on my ears before the age of 12. And it was the final operation on my 12th birthday in which I managed to get like 65% of my hearing back. So I'm, I have impaired hearing. Um, but that was my that was a big part of my childhood, which contributed to me being a very quiet child, a very socially inept child. I was very starey because I would stare at people right, in order to take them right, in because right, I couldn't hear them, and right. so I've maintained that ability, and that quality, and uh, still freak people out. Um, and I, uh, but it also made me a, a hyper observant person, which has stood me in good stead in this like very dangerous industry. Um, but and in the world as a woman, uh, so I was unpopular, spent a lot of time on my own, which which allowed me to kind of grow my creativity and and just sort of allow me to become exactly who I was. I wasn't shaped by other people around me because there were no other people around me. You have siblings? I have a brother, he was older, but he went to live in Spain when I was very, very young. So we were kind of separated. So I kind of lived as an only child for many years. Yes. And um, I didn't come from any money. So like, you know, parents were out working and they separated when I was very, very young. And I went to a special needs primary school and then I got into a, I got a full scholarship into a school that isn't for special needs kids. And during my time there, I regained my hearing and I was able to win a music scholarship and uh, an academic scholarship. And I just stayed there until I was 17. 17, got hit by a car, broke my back, uh, didn't move How did for that about happen? two years. I was running away from a bee that wasn't chasing me. I just saw a bee and I remembered home alone and I ran away from it into traffic. Really? Uh, yeah. Jesus. I run into traffic when I see uh, flying insects. Yeah. Uh, that's, to me, that seems safer. Understood. So I'm a, an idiot. Um, what's happening outside? It's very What's happening outside is Jesus somebody Christ. thought it was a good idea to walk in in the middle of our podcast and no, I it's fine. shook it's my head and told girl. him it was Bloody not hell. a good um, idea. So, so <laughs> he got the picture and left and he now knows he's going to... Get it? Like I'm yeah. just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you you had a, a B. You decided it was gonna be problems. It actually turned into a massive a fucking problem. B changed the course of the rest of my life because that accident was the single best thing that ever happened to me, and I I, I recommend it to you all. Um, <laughs> Break your back. Yep. And lay down um, for two years. It really humbles you, and there's something about not being able to piss on your own that really changes the way that you feel about yourself and your body. And I think at that point, when I was lucky enough to come out of that still able to walk, I realized that, God. I've really been mistreating my body because up until then, from the age of 12 until 17, I was severely anorexic. I'm sorry. And starving myself all of the time because it was the 90s. It was all about heroin yes, chic. That was a term being used I non-ironically remember. by grown adults yeah. who were fucking idiots. And um, they were putting that out for very young yeah. kids. And yeah. the internet had just come up. And so it was all these like thin inspiration websites. Of course, and I remember. I have ADD, so you're gonna like. This is good, you yeah. wanna play? Okay, fine. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so go ahead. Okay. What's happening? I'm just fidgeting with this. Oh, while, you can't while fidget I'm while I'm here. I've got ADD. Oh, yeah. it's the reverse. I it's thought that was going to help. No. Oh, so no, now I'm, I'm, I'm in real trouble. Oh, I'm still, in trouble. Gary. Be I'm still. <laughs> I promise you, this is n- this, this is going to be fun. Be, we're going to fight. Fun, guys. <laughs> we're not going to fight. We're happy. Um, I'm um, going to. Okay. I'm just fidgeting with my toes right now. Yeah, yeah. So no, go ahead. I'm just like I'm big on. Go ahead. I'm big on asking what I need. Listen, I'm thrilled. I'm very good at delivering on what people need. So keep going. That's amazing. Go ahead. Um. Okay. So where was I? You were uh, talking about the inspiration and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been talking so myself. You got to think. So when I was lucky enough yep. to get better, I realized that I disrespected my body so profoundly up until now. And I was like, okay, that's it. I have to do something. Like what made me think that starving myself right. was a good idea? Right. Why did I think that that was beauty and that made me worthy? Like why did I never care that I had a music scholarship after being deaf most of my life? Why did I never care that I was a, an academic kid who had like straight A's all throughout school? I was a good kid. I didn't value why anything about myself. Why was your perspective looking at the half glass I empty? I just wanted to be 90 pounds. That was I it. That was my marker that was the KPI. of success yep. as a human being or just like basic worth. Yeah, yeah. And so 
I started campaigning against the fashion industry. Understood. And I entered the fashion industry in order to do it. I became a model scout. I started trying to scout plus size girls, but I was ahead of the I was ahead of the, yep. the curve. Yep. Uh, no pun intended. And so <laughs> I used to, uh, so they said no to all of the curvy sure. girls, but I started writing letters to magazines about what I was seeing and they were making 12 year olds cry about their weight. And yes. I kicked off the size zero debate with a letter that I wrote to the Evening Standard in the UK and it turned into this huge thing across the news. I was all over the news. I was doing like live Channel 4 and this was in England and BBC Live. I was 19 years old. There's still like little videos of this on like Getty That's Images. Awesome. And uh, I've been talking about everything I'm talking about now for the longest time. Good for you. The dumbest thing about what's going on in my career right now is that I have majority support. Like I say 90% support, but the 10% of people who give me a lot of shit We're talking treat about me. macro feedback from the world. Yes. Yeah. Social, social articles, media, just, people, I like, have mass support. I understand this people, 90 10. When people take me, try to take me down, they treat me as though I'm someone who a year ago was an actress in the good place who just decided to pick up activism I because I thought it would make me trendy. Sure. Because activism has become trendy. It's like, I have been in this shit for 14 years. Some of you little haters can weren't I, can, even alive can when I, I can started I, this. How, how do, you know, this is something I can really connect with you on. How does that. How do you think about that? Because you're bringing it up now. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have empathy for that. It makes sense to me. Don't you love though that the truth is on your side? I think in, you know, for me, the thing that, you know, and I kind of live this life as well. Right now I'm getting destroyed uh, for Are the you? last, currently in certain pockets because I think sometimes it's strategic to do free work to get your foot in the door. Which makes me, you know, a complete vampire. You know, no free work ever. You know, obviously, which is, but by the way. We've all done that. I think so, but many people who have not had to do that, who did uh, not grow up the way I did, who don't realize they think they're fighting for other people, but what they're actually doing is showing their unbelievable privilege of never having to be in that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, it's an audition process. That. It's an audition process. That's I will what do it, it until the day I die. Mm -hmm. there, I'm not always looking for a check in return for why I'm doing something. Yeah. I mean, you sat here and talked about the thing I believe in the most, which is a platform where you have awareness to be able to do something. The attention is the number one thing. Yeah. And yet, so nonetheless, you know, but it's it hurts my feelings. People are like, yeah. you're the devil. You're like, I'm like, I, it makes me, it, I'm a human. However, um, you know, when people are like, when they say anything, and we all will be, judgment is way more trendy Oh, we're judgment than, addicts. Than activists. Yeah. You know, than anything. Judgment is the fucking number one thing that's yeah. happening in society mm -hmm. at scale. As a matter of fact, I'm actually a little bit, actually we're getting a little, I'm bouncing around here. Uh, I'm actually weirded My out. My ADD can follow this. You just can't move no or make any sound. So like, yeah. how about this? I'm with you, Gary. Okay, right here. You ready? <laughs> how about this? I'm actually scared that we are on such hyper attack on judgment mm -hmm. that what we do as humans always is counteract the other way. And I find myself now and honestly, I was DNA wise and parenting wise. Do you I think was, you're being pushed back into like archaic beliefs because you're being because you're fed up of the you're like get back in the kitchen. No, <laughs> no I'm joking. But but I but but the fact that you're <laughs> but wait, the fact that you're making that connection does get me to a point. Mm -hmm. I'm so sad that everyone's judging everyone on an adjective during a a conversation, not even a debate, yeah. amongst acquaintance friends mm -hmm. that I'm concerned. Because I understand how humans are wired. It's gonna bring the gonna defense go, up. Yeah. Like I'm at a point where I'm like struggling to judge anybody about anything. Mm -hmm. It's actually this weird kind of like reverse thing that scares me that it's the chess mm -hmm. move to the bad stuff. Yeah. I'm like the macro is gonna play out. I mean, so nonetheless, I'm ranting because you're bringing a lot of thoughtful uh, fodder you. to here. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. This is the kind of shit I like talking I, about. So my my way of dealing with this is that I was just like, you have you truth. On, you have truth on your side. This is where I'm going. A, I have truth on my side. The Period. B, but B, no. But there is always a B. I am also a flawed human being. I'm gonna make mistakes. I've Who made mistakes. It? I have a, a receipts of mistakes that I've made because the internet never forgets. And so. What I've had to do is just accept that some people are right. When they are criticizing me, they are Agreed. right and they have a right to criticize me. And I don't take it personally anymore because I can't. Because if you're gonna be an activist, you have to leave your ego and your pride at the door. And so I've just realized that if I'm gonna put myself out there and put my opinions all over the place, I have to be willing to take some shit back. And it just doesn't, I'm not here to be liked. I couldn't give a fuck about being liked. I'm not interested in it. I've come here to create change so no one ever goes through what I've been through I understand. ever again. So I don't really care about that but also I have decided to make it part of my I'm gonna say the word brand um but I've decided to make it part of my brand can I help you with brand 
for a yeah. second on the blip on your throw yeah. up. I, I'm so fascinated by societies. I'm English uh, though, we are assholes. Respect, but okay. but I'm still, and English is, and, and London is part of society. We're pop, like, yeah. We're... I'm fascinated by the semantics of words. People are unbelievably throwing up on each other about personal brand or brand, yet if you just say reputation, it's remarkably consumable. I am scolded if I even go down the path of the word hustle for being a bro, yet if I change it to work ethic, I'm admired for acknowledging that it's part of the equation. Semantics of words, back to judgment, sure. has become fucking ridiculous. But brand is infused with capitalism as a word. It's marinated in the idea of capitalism. So say reputation. And so therefore, yeah, fine. But cool. my but my, my whole my whole sh- shtick, should I say? We say am I saying shtick? Shtick no. is very good. Um, I, <laughs> I like shtick. I, um, That's very comfortable to me. Is that? I am a flawed person and the thing that I I constantly say to people throughout my activism is we are looking for progress, not perfection. The search for moral purity will never go anywhere because it doesn't exist and also human beings continue to update. We have to continue updating ourselves like iPhones and we have to keep learning about new genders, new sexualities, new ways in which people want to live and we have to learn how to unlearn our previous programming around that and and get with the program now and so i i very much so own my pinned tweet is all of my mistakes so i'm just like come at me bro it's like la- I'm, I'm not it's, it's, hiding it's, from it's my it's the flaws. last scene of eight mile i bring yeah. it up all the time yeah it's the best way to play exactly and so i'm just like i'm i'm it. just i'm that's uh, awesome so it, it doesn't By the way, bother me it's fucking amazing thanks it makes you happier well it's also like made my it's like helped my career of as an actor it's weirdly because more men follow me than ever before like yep. more people who've made mistakes find that my social media is a safe space to learn because now we've made people too afraid to even put their hands up and, and say I, I don't know the answer a hundred percent we chat chastise people for ignorance. You can't chastise someone for something that they don't even know yet. And so you can chastise someone for deliberate, you, willful you, ignorance. You can when you're delusional and yeah. you start and you start getting into this ideological place. That's what I'm saying, willful ignorance no em- you're not. Yeah. We completely lack empathy. We completely collectively yeah. lack empathy. Yeah. We we make we cast judgment through our filter mm-hmm. without no bringing space for trauma. any yeah. any compassion or empathy or at all. Yeah. It's a, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so like, willful ignorance is the only one that I think you can chastise people for because there's always an ability to learn. We have the internet. You've got no excuse. If you live in the West and you have the internet and correct, a phone, you have correct, no excuse correct. to not update your information Putting your head in the sand because you choose to. Yeah. yeah uh, looking no. the other way because it's in your vested interest. Exactly. And so I that's, completely agree with you. That's, my, that's, that's where I'm at. And what that, else? It's been very helpful to me in my What else career. do you like? Do you like food, music, sport, like what, What? like just for five seconds for my own curiosity. I love food. What about I board love games? I love food, I love board games. What is your favorite Scrabble. board Scrabble. Are you, because you're fucking great at it because you're a fucking writer? Yeah. Fuck, I can't spell for <laughs> shit. I like literally never, like, like I play Scrabble and then like, like I get dominated and then my friend will look over and he's like, why didn't you make the word cat? I'm like, fuck. Like I'm like the worst. What about Monopoly? But you're doing okay in other areas, yes. Harry, so I'm not worried about you. And by the way, you. by the way, it's really fascinating. I, it took me a long, long time because of the 80s, because my mother was embarrassed of her accent so she wouldn't go to school nights because of a lot of things that happened. A lot of the things about myself I now know, I had to learn much, much, much later. Like, I will go mm-hmm. and speak in Madison Square Garden right now in front of 35,000 people, right now. If you're like, you have to go do it, in a heartbeat. If you ask me to read the first page of that comic book, I would shrivel. This goes all the way back to those things. But to your point, I'm also wildly observant, mm-hmm. and it's because the way I learn wasn't through, like, words. No, like, same. You know? Yeah, I have difficulty reading. I have difficulty reading music and yeah, I could play like at a grade eight level. Like, That's but awesome. I can't read any music. That's I have interesting. trouble ingesting information via written word. Like, you know. Are you wildly that... competitive when you board game? No. Like, no? No, I'm just. That breaks my heart. I'm just really good, so I don't. I know, but, but are, you, are, you com- are you competitive? Uh, no. Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I think the only thing I would ever say I'm competitive about is that genuinely, and I noticed this via my addiction to Super Mario when I was 16, is okay. that I can, I want to beat my own score. That's the that's only fa- thing I'm interested in. That's fascinating. I, it took me a long time to get into a health regimen that I felt was something that was a smart decision mm-hmm. for my long-term life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was always, you know, and, I, and it, I had this completely crazy breakthrough, which is I'm the complete opposite of that. I have no fucking interest and going faster by one second, or jumping, like, com- I wanna compete with all of you at scale on tilt, Yeah. 
and not with myself. Yeah, I, I think I think since I had therapy, I, I've got no competition really in me at all. Now all I genuinely want is to be happy, and I because I didn't know I that, that that was a thing. I, I didn't that. know that happiness existed, I love and that. therefore I didn't prioritize it whatsoever when I was younger. And so therefore I thought success was measured in how money. Much, and how much con- consciously do you think about your legacy, like the day after you? Oh, die. never. I think legacy Zero. is bullshit. Yeah, I think That's I so don't understand people me, who I care about legacy. So I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I, uh, it's just, <laughs> I'm so, it, it genu- I'm, like I, like the good news is no, I'm happy for you. No, I'm sorry. The people I know love legacy. I just don't give a fuck about legacy. I just, I'll be dead and I'll be. uh, You won't know. I won't know. Do you think though, when one thinks of legacy, it dictates behavior that then they could be proud of? I just say interesting. Perhaps no, perhaps, but it also sometimes can consume you because you sometimes miss the things that can make you happy now, so that you can beyond your. But what if that process is what makes one happy? Well, if that process is what makes you happy, then that's fine. But a lot of people, I think we can both admit, like we know very successful people, a lot of those people who are so dedicated to their legacy are not happy. Well, that's in because the pursuit insecurity of said runs deep. Yeah, but that also insecurity can sometimes be the the driver, the driver for legacy. You know, like, why do you need, I, I'm not inter- like genuinely. No, I'm I believe not, you, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. When, I'm, when somebody chooses uh, activism or wants to do things, yeah. there's a lot of different ways that can, filter yeah and i don't sure. and i, and I oh, genuinely yeah. don't think one is right over the other it was like fu- it's fun to think about like i i i do think about legacy i do want to live my life in mm. a way I, this is actually i don't even know if it's legacy this is what runs through me i don't know why this caught me early on i'm fascinated by the notion of which funeral you choose to go to <laughs> what like the oscars party no, I have no idea what that is. No, is it like they have different parties after the Oscars? I know nothing about like, Hollywood, who goes so to which party? I don't even know. Not what, that. What do you, what do you I mean, which funeral? you get an email right now, yeah. and your fourth grade teacher has passed away, yeah. and you decided that she or he brought you so much value right. that even though tomorrow's a very busy day, you decide to fly to the UK or anything else. But why do you care if you're dead? You don't know. No, no, forget about that. Okay. In the macro, right. I am fascinated by the concept and rarely hear anyone talk about this notion of the decision-making process oh, right. that people go through when they choose which funerals they go to versus not. Oh, that's and I don't know why I caught that as a young kid, but I would watch. I'd be like, why didn't that guy go, like why didn't that business friend of mine go to, that was his best business yeah. partner for 15 years. Like just, even my own. Like l- l- there's been you know different. You know, I'm referring to one that very vividly. Somebody I did business with a long time, who my dad was very close with. Like why? It was like seven, eight years ago. Why did I not choose to fly back from San Francisco for that funeral? Like it's a terrible day. I understand that, but then which ones? Like there are people I'm thinking about now, and I don't want to jinx it. I'm very Eastern European that way. But like I would, <laughs> I would like you know I'd have, rip off my arms and swim with nothing like to get to. It's I'm fascinated by that. Because I think it's one of these kind of ultimate decisions. You know that person doesn't know. I think it's an interesting paradigm that I've always been fascinated by, and that's I'm just bringing that up. I think for me, like I'm not interested in weddings or funerals. Like I'm not. I don't feel a drive to to make an effort to get to either of them particularly. I know. I, I do. I sound like a sociopath. Not, like not only not like a not, sociopath. not only do, not only I'm so sorry. not only don't you. A lot of the framework of what you're talking about here connects with me tremendously. Okay. Well, I, I think yeah. that people make attachment to things that are other people's ideologies. I love you, I actually, you, you like I that sentence? I love you. I, know, I just like being oh, here. thank you. Uh, yes, this is very fun. I love you too, thank you for saying that. Like honestly, I actually really <laughs> resonate with where you're going. Uh, I, I have the same thing. I'm unbelievably comfortable in the feelings that I have and my truths. Yeah. And I recognize when sometimes they align with the masses. Yeah. And I'm equally and more comfortably aligned. I, I, I kind of love when it's not. No, I'm, co- I'm confused by these events. I'm confused by them and I don't know why, but I'm just confused by them. I've never been to a wedding. I've never been to a funeral. Oh no, I went to well, a funeral. Huh. You've never been to a wedding? No one even wants to fuck any of my friends, never mind marry them. <laughs> 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 I, no, but um, really, you've never been. Yeah, no, I never that been. Is, that you've actively made that something that you've you've chosen to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. There's like Do one, you remember when you first thought that that would be cool? And when I say cool, no, when, no, no. You, I want, I'll I use never, a different word. I, yeah, because I, 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 it's an important. Words matter. Do you remember when you chose and, and had that conversation with your own self of like, oh, I'm not going to go to weddings? 
No, I didn't. It was never. It just never happened. I just didn't like. A, I mean, You've I didn't really like. Invited. I've been a, 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 a couple of times, not as much as I should have by this age. But that's <laughs> on my friends. <laughs> yes, I understand. Uh, but I've also never invited them to my wedding. I understand. So, you know, I'm in the same boat. Yes, I understand. Uh, we're just no a, hypocrisy. Just here. a gr- group of unlovables. But um, but he, yeah, I'm just not interested. I'm definitely not interested in going to someone's funeral because I think it's sad. It smells funny, and the person. But you've never not been. There. How do you know if it's? Smells funny? I went to one when I was nine, oh, and yeah, I just remember like that. yeah, my I'm uncle's just, yeah. my uncle's death, uh, and I was and like. Like, I'm done with this shit. I was just like, this is just a bad day. Yeah, it is. As everyone's upset. Yes. And this person doesn't even know that I made the effort to come here. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm getting no credit like, yes. for this whatsoever. That's right. Like, uh, really, a lot of people but are what here about just to show to each other ma- that they yeah, were well, there. Like, I'm not, I'm, no, I want credit from the person that I cared about. Yes, and if I they're gone, then I'm out. I like, understand. I maybe, I know that they're gone. I also, like, so have the way- no spirituality or religion in me whatsoever. I understand that. What does that mean? Does that mean that when somebody that you're very close to for 30, 40 years, you find out they're sick, your big, your mindset goes to fuck, I gotta go see them before, before they, they go. die. Yeah, yes, I understand That's that. where I'm interested. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I wanna I like have that, that I like final that. goodbye. I'm not saying goodbye after they're like, they're, they're not Talk no to me about alive. your content consumption. My content consumption? How podcasts, social, newspapers, magazines, the internet itself, text messaging, OTTs, network, movies, books. You as an animal, how and what do you consume? I Netflix and ill. I'm a chronically ill person, and so I spend a lot of my time on Netflix, and that's how I exist. Do you manifest uh, that, or is that just the nature no, of the no, body? No, no, yeah, I, have, yeah. I was born with a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and it Got just it. basically so you're just, Ill, uh, yeah, ruins you, my so life. So um, you drop the C and the H, yeah. and you Netflix and Yeah, it. I Netflix and ill I on, my, on my own, yes. <laughs> or with my very loving boyfriend. Yes. Okay. Um, but I, uh, I also consume a lot of my information on Twitter and Instagram, yep. and I find a lot of my favorite writers via there, and like my yep. favorite speakers. I found you on Instagram yep. via your videos. Um, I don't. I haven't yet found time to listen to podcasts or, okay. or actually like have anything that I subscribe to and I have as a routine. And okay. I'd like to do that. Something I aspire to. Have you but, have you won yeah. have you won off the podcast here and there? No. So you've never con- like you no ne- almost yeah. maybe. By the way, nor have I. I have. I have never. Uh, that's not true. I think I listened to like fifteen minutes of a barstool thing. One. But I I mean I'm under two hours of podcast consumption. I basically spend 95% of my time consuming comments yeah. of my content and others. Yeah. I will hear something in the consciousness, you know, going to the bathroom and that's like, hey, did you hear about, you know, Meg the Stallion? And I'm like, well, and then I'll go Google and or or what or, or go on Instagram, find her. The, and then I won't even listen to her music or why she's popping. I've consumed more comments of Lizzo yeah. than Lizzo songs. Yeah. I same. love consuming replies. No, I'm I'm exactly the same. Interesting. I'm so interested in that, and I and do you I also feel like, like that gives us. I apologize. Do you feel like it gives us a little bit of like a qu- usually quick insights to things that people don't see yet? Perhaps, I think a lot about that. I think perhaps, but I just know that that's what I'm most interested in. I'm I'm fascinated by people. I'm fascinated by Me mental too. health. I'm fascinated Me by too. trauma. I'm I want to know how people work, and I want to help them work better and more efficiently and be happier. And that's really all I'm interested in is just like your happiness and your like orgasm frequency and all of the different things like I just want you to be happy and so I read people's comments I I, I ingest a lot of information via social media and I know that that's like you know frowned upon by some people but those people are fucking idiots yeah yeah there are great people on Twitter and I think if you're someone who has a thicker skin and doesn't have your feelings hurt all the time if you don't take Twitter personally Twitter is just an amazing what's your hot take on feelings hurt and thin skin like what wait 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 wait, 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 please I'm sorry finish your Um, thought and so uh, mm. you said people are awesome no people are great great information and and you find and people demonize People, social networks. Also, I understand where you're but going. But also because I think because of the content that I put out is like somewhat intelligent sometimes. Sometimes I'm just, you know, a Neanderthal. Yep. Uh, but sometimes my, my content is intelligent. I've therefore attracted intelligent people towards me and I learn so much from my own How community. How do intelligent people feel when you're saying something that isn't intelligent? They let me know very quickly yeah. and very publicly. And, and how do you feel with that? Like, I feel how okay. Like there's a, there's a tiny bit like, I think the, and, and that feeling has faded. Like, there was an original feeling of like that sort of like burning in your chest where you just feel humiliated. And that was the moment where I realized like, oh, do you, feel, do you, feel you brought like- your pride into this. You're making this about you. Yes. And it's not supposed to be yes. about you. You can't be standing up for marginalized people thinking about yourself and how you're That's being right. bloody represented. That's right. And so I left that alone and now yep. I don't care. And now I feel very free and happy. Good for you. What uh? What have we not touched on? 
you know, knowing a lot, a lot of people over the next five, 10 years will listen to this. Is there anything that we haven't serendipitously gone into that maybe you want to share? I'd like to talk about what I'm doing at the moment. Please. If I may. Of course um, you may. That's why I asked. So about a year ago, I saw, um, I joined Instagram about a year and a half ago. Okay. Because I was having to promote The Good Place. And okay. they, you know, they asked me to join. I'd always And you were finally it. ready? Yeah. You were well, also no, finally no, ready. Because they asked you before. They, they asked me. And they hadn't really asked me before. But now that the show was growing, they were just like, will you join social media? And I, I kind of joined it, but didn't post anything. And then I started to finally about a year and a half ago. Did you make an ideological statement? standpoint on that like weddings like you were like I'm just not going to be about that prior to that yeah I preferred Understood. Twitter I wasn't yep. into the photo side of I things I see you pre- got un- right. now that going. it's become more video friendly I was suddenly like oh I'm more interested in this I will tell you this and I think you could crush this based on this is now on intuition I think one of the most interesting things going on on Instagram that more people need to explore is to take a photo mm-hmm. regardless of its production value and then genuinely write a fucking book like limit to the limit like I've been fascinated by Instagram as a blog mm-hmm. has been a very effective way for many different people to communicate. It's, it's how s- my activism has spread so far. But I, so I joined it a year and a half ago, like properly, where I properly got involved, started posting like, regularly, started paying now. attention, yep. following other people, yep. like ingesting content. Yep. And um, around the same time, I, uh, I, I, I went through, I clicked that little mic, mic uh, what is it, a microscope? Is that a microscope? It's a, it's a, a the search. glass. The search? The search button, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Magnifying glass. You. Jesus it's a Sherlock Holmes. It's like from sorry, some, I've been at work you should know this. It's, br- it's probably some British shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's like a Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes okay. bullshit yeah. magnifying glass. So I clicked on that and that is a very dangerous button to press because you have no idea what you, you are mean going explore? to see. You mean explore? Yeah, the explore yeah. button. Uh, and so Explore I was just, exposes you. Oh, for sure. I love when people are like, yeah, yeah, and I'll grab their like I'm talking now, real friends to like yeah, talk yeah. shit about it's what they do, butts. and then I grab yeah. their phone and hit explore. I'm like, uh, you go on Instagram for tits and ass. Yeah, you're like, they're like, no, I'm really into the. Cheeks. I'm like, mm, yeah. Yeah, the algorithm knows exactly what yeah, you're about. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like it ex- it exposes you quick. But the algorithm also exposes social media. The algorithm exposes the fact that 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 social media hunts you down based on your gender. And, and based on your age. And me being a young woman on Instagram meant that Instagram was sending me pictures that I didn't need to see as a young woman. And those are images of very famous, beautiful women with numbers written across their bodies. And those numbers were not their net worth, because these are people like the Kardashians, Taylor Swift, sure. people who are worth tens of millions, and I, or billions even. And I clicked on the pictures of them and all of those numbers were just their weight. And I was like, What do you Jesus, mean their weight? Just oh, their these, weight, these, like 53 understood, kilos understood, or pounds. Understood. And I was like, this and, wasn't and their. The I wasn't following. This wasn't their account. No. These were other accounts that were pushing their yeah, propaganda. Yeah, pushing like kind of anorexic yeah. propaganda, yeah. and yeah. they were just like the 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 post was written underneath it, being like, you know, these people are this this height. How much do you weigh? Yep. And then you had thousands of comments yep. of little girls being like, oh no, I'm the same height as Kendall yep. Jenner, but I weigh this much. Yeah, yeah. And so I just something snapped in me because once I pressed it, because of the fucking algorithm, more and more posts like that started coming up to me, and like suddenly I was just being bombarded with this thin inspiration all over again, just like when I was a teenager. So I was like, okay. Okay, enough. I'm gonna go on the offense. I'm gonna go on the offense. So I went onto Twitter and I was like, I posted those posts. I went on a rant and I said, this is what I weigh. I weigh my financial independence, my activism, my relationships, the things that the eating disorder I've overcome, the struggles I'm still coping with. I weigh the sum of all of my motherfucking parts and wrote fucking KG underneath that. And I just posted it out. I didn't have a very big following at all. I had like 16,000 followers on, on Instagram and like, maybe 75,000 on Twitter, like it wasn't huge. And it went viral immediately. People started sending me back their I weigh pages of what they weigh and their contributions to society and their Love. attributes that weren't in the physical. And it just became this movement. This now thing. I thought it would be like, maybe like the ALS ice bucket challenge, like two <laughs> weeks and then gone. Um, and no one which ever about, knew what the fuck Which is about 13 challenge days more than most things yeah. get. <laughs> and I, so I started an Instagram account thinking, I'll just put these up there so that then they were there and everyone will remember that they put their post up because they were super brave. And now a year later, we're almost at a million and growing. And this is without a social media Good team. Like this is just purely yeah. organic. It's people submitting their Listen, posts all of the time. When messages hit home, it, there's nothing like it. And it's just like, there's it shows nothing you, like it. It shows you how diminished our sense of self-worth is, especially in women, but also in like gay men and non-binary people. There are so many people out there who just feel so undermined by what, our society. Where, where I think we need to really get to, to a thoughtful mm-hmm. place, is understand what your, that your statement mm-hmm. is actually happening to everybody. Oh yeah. The biggest issue that I'm telling a lot of my friends is go into other websites with people that don't believe in the same things you believe 
and find how they feel like they're being suppressed. Yeah. Like th- this is the gr- w- this is where empathy and compassion and thoughtfulness and truly because everyone's digging in. Mm-hmm. Like people are digging in real heavy right now. Yeah, and I get so much amazing feedback. I have a DM that feels like a giant focus group into the innermost feelings and thoughts of the world. And so this whole thing, this Instagram account turned into a global movement and I was able to turn that into petitions and then be able to get those petitions into parliament in the United Kingdom and into Congress in New York. And um, I was able to, you know, I I was offered a meeting with Instagram who had seen that my, my following was growing and that they really liked the positivity of I way because it was a a rare safe space on Instagram and that's something that Instagram want they aren't these like evil bastards who want everyone to starve themselves but they have been complicit in allowing that to continue and they are aware of that so yeah but you know and I'm just gonna jump in like I think I think we have to have very thoughtful conversations yeah. of humans doing human things. Yeah. I mean, there's. But we also have like social responsibility. We have, if we're going to open the door to young people, we have to do better at policing that space. Of course. Right. And of so, course. so when I had that meeting with them, I was like, okay, I have three days. I'm going to start a petition and just see where I get. I got 250,000 signatures in under three days. And so I went to them with that and I said, look, everyone is aware of how annoying I am. I'm only going to get worse. So you can either do this with me. Or I'll just do this Without to you. you. Yeah. And uh, they were amazing. They were so unexpectedly immediately on board. They'd been all so aware of my petition and yep. they just moved faster than I ever could have imagined. That's awesome. Six months later, Facebook and Instagram globally have made it impossible for minors to be able to even see weight loss products, diet products, detox products, yep. uh, cosmetic surgery procedures. Yep. You can't see it under 18. Awesome. And if you're over 18 and you see these things that are like lose 55 pounds in 15 seconds, it, you can report it and it comes down immediately. Yep. So this is just the start of what needs to happen because we need to deal with our entire societal value of people and this obsession with vanity. Um, but we uh, we are on the road to showing people that a disobedient woman can make a big fucking difference. Well, th- that's always been the case when the gates are open in our society, mm-hmm. which is actually the true power of the internet. Mm-hmm. We are actively demonizing mm-hmm. all of this while it actually is the framework that people that come along that can make change are using to make change. Yeah, and look, I'm not the only person who's been fighting for this. There are people with way less privilege than me that have been fighting harder for longer. But unfortunately, as I learned when I was 19, when I was not being allowed in as an activist, with the platform and the privilege, you can create huge change. And so I've made it my mission and I totally understand the frustration of people who feel like I got more credit, but I have been in this for 14 years and I've never stopped and I was a big kid who got bullied for their weight and then I was the anorexic teenager so I do it I do have the credentials to like back up my passion Listen, here. Listen, th- again, this goes back, the thematics of all this is judgment. Mm-hmm. I, when people talk about privilege, mm-hmm. my genuine vibe on that over the last two, three years has been in a very funny place which is because we are able mm-hmm. to see one's happiness and mental status we will never get to the actual conversation of privilege. Exactly. Which is the true privilege yeah. of society is what's going on in here. But the funniest thing is that I think, you know, people are so quick to judge that no one ever gave me a chance. N- not no one. Loads of people gave me a chance. Loads of people have been supportive. But the people who have been so suspicious of me, I understand that suspicion because so many people in my industry don't give a fucking shit about them. But I do. And they didn't realize what I was planning I all it. along. Let me just finish. Uh, but please, it's please. Like, so, And so now what I've done is I've hired this incredible team of women and we've b- built this company now. And we're taking my way from Instagram now onto a website and into a full activism platform That's where awesome. we're now going to lend my platform and my privilege to the young people and the marginalized people who never got a chance before. And we're creating it. this space of content where you will finally, wherever you are from, whoever you are, whatever you look like, you will see someone like you reflected back on that page. And so that's something that I feel super proud of and like passionate about. What's that gonna be called? I Weigh, based on the movement of the Instagram account. It's called I Weigh and it started off as this statement around body yeah. image, but really it was about our emotional health and our mental health well-being and that's what it is. Some people think it's a body positive account. It's not, it's a mental health movement. I totally that is understand. the thing that I'm the most invested in in the world. Are you worried about the literal name skewing so literal to, you know, to your point, it's yeah. a it's a higher 
play from yeah. a mental standpoint, but the name is so literal in its interpretation mm-hmm. potentially. Was but that it something takes like you three about? seconds to see. I if you it. see the account, I, I think it's fairly, it's I fairly it. clear, but I totally, it's, I, it's, 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 I it's completely a see that. Listen, I also am the one who says names are made and like get changed all the time. I was just curious, genuinely curious no, how yeah. you, if you thought about, I, I'm fascinated by like positioning. Yeah, yeah. So I was just curious, like did that ever, like obviously there's so much equity in that. Some people think I'm Ai Weiwei, which is really annoying. <laughs> uh, like <laughs> they roll up on you in real life, like, <laughs> yeah. hi Ai Weiwei. Yeah, uh, I remember Ai Weiwei sent That's me funny. like a book to promote and I was like, too close, man, too close, go did, away. Did I tell you, uh, have you guys heard this from me, like how many people think my name is Garvey? Like when I'm in public, have you, have you seen that too? Like people are like, Garvey! I'm like, man, interesting, you read like I do. <laughs> like I always feel warm oh, to those people. No, so no, I, and also like the point of I weigh please. is it's I, it's what you weigh on the inside. I totally understand. So therefore it's all about your, it's it's your inner work. I think you're, I think, in. and I, I'm aware that you're, you're taking it to the place you wanna take it and that, just that, nonetheless, let's move on. Parting shots, what do you got? What's your favorite, which, what are you obsessed with right now? Um, in a lighthearted way, with? like like a drink, like 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 an, a, a single person that you're following for the last two days, a song you've played on, th- like just a fun, lightweight, what are you obsessed with right now? I'm obsessed with people. You don't I understand. It. I know I do. I'm obsessed with I them. I genuinely fucking do. I've always been, and like, you know, I was, a, I was a kid who grew up, like there was a lot of abuse in my childhood. Like I've, I met all kinds of different people way too young, and yep. I had all kinds of different That's experiences good. with people way too young. I mean, it's not great, but of it course was helpful it's great. in the end. Well, that ends up meaning that it's great. Yeah. But I'm okay. just saying, that's just, it's important to be thoughtful to the people who perhaps are still going through the bad of it and haven't yet that gotten to the good. You're not, but, you're not saying just because it's you no. this way that that's not going on no, for I them. Could have done I understand less trauma, the hedge. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I still would have been smart and observant with just a touch less trauma. But nonetheless. Adversity is foundational. For sure. But and by the way, is Anna, foundational. wait, go ahead. but when advers- adversity is foundational when you also have the tremendous privilege of having access to therapy and help. Okay. That's important to remember because uh, a lot of people just get left in where they're at. Because and by they the can't way, and by out. the way, let's define words. Yeah. Adversity versus massive trauma are yeah, two yeah, very, yeah. you know, also, adverse, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so I, without, you know, you're being yeah, yeah, yeah. vague, so I can't, I can't no, j- make sure, assumptions. Sure. I think back to those kind, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think, and, and it's so, I don't know, we're living through, I'm so fucking grateful to be living through this time. Yeah. I think it is a very, I think, look, I think we've all, no matter how young we are, we've all lived through times where things are a little bit more kind of like stable. Like, it's intriguing to live through real fucking change. And there's real monumental, scaled change that will play out over the next century. This is where my obsession is coming from is that I think the reason that I was like, you know, a victim of so many different types of abuse is because people were holding in all of their feelings and all of their thoughts all of the time. You know, I grew up in Britain in the 90s yep. and and everyone's racism was like very insidious of and it course. was very like hidden, but it would like burst out of them. And so I think what was so interesting is the fact that I've come through that time into now where everyone's feelings are just spilling out of them yes. and it's like, oh my God, everyone is unlocking. Yes. And I find that fascinating because and good. Because it's great. And good. I'm with it's you. It's so healthy. I think it's the so sh- much healthier. Listen, I'm watching how you're navigating, how you're speaking, what you're talking about. Like, I'm a buyer of what you're putting down. The shadows of our lives are the jails. Yeah, That's where the sure. bad shit is. I'm with you. And I'm I really with like, you. I really love your realism. It's a thing that I've, like, I haven't heard this podcast before, yes. which is why I was like, well, can I, I swear? Earlier, you don't listen to uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I, uh, but I watch all your videos and I Thank just think the way, that. the fact that you just cut straight through the shit and you just tell the truth or you tell your truth, whatever, right. it's my whatever truth. the response and, and that honestly, may be. With, uh, what I think now that I get an even better sense of you, why I understand, for some people, they think that there's, there's always the other side of the coin. They, but I understand now why you, we have a lot of similarities, obviously yeah. a lot of differences. I think you can sense, much like I'm feeling during this whole time mm-hmm. together, that when one shoots it straight or keeps it real, mm-hmm. there are two very fucking different versions of that. One, somebody's doing that to suppress. Two other versions, somebody actually has genuine intent that mm-hmm. hopes it's the variable that helps one. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm grateful that you understood that. Yeah, I appreciate that about you. I was I, just—it's I, genuinely how I feel. Like, I feel like, why not? Like, 
I'm so bored at at the idea of pretense. I can't be bothered. Like I've lost so many years of my life already. I'm not interested in small talk or wasting my time. Everyone's by the way, and here's why: all everyone's losing in that scenario. Nobody's winning. No, the person that's deploying it ultimately becomes resentful. Mm-hmm. The person on the other side is not getting any benefit. Mm-hmm. It's a lose-lose fucking situation. It's sullied. The whole situation, yes. the whole interaction is sullied and, and pointless. And, I have no um, idea what sullied is, but I'm sure dirty. it's exactly right. Sullied, yeah. got it. <laughs> um, you're fucking right. Thank you. Thank you. This is a great chat. <laughs> that was fun.